it's just interesting because they don't seem to understand that Jesus, who is right there in front of them, is God, is Messiah, right? Yeah. So they praised God for what had been given to man, thinking that Jesus was just a man. Welcome to the Bible in One Year podcast, brought to you by two Brits in a Bible. Today is day 278, covering Matthew 9 and 10. Ah, uh, I should have known, I should have known from your comment last. You're like, oh, maybe the, the switch is gone and I can't do my accents anymore. I'm like, I'm calling, I'm calling nonsense on that straight away. I like, have that one like wired up, ready with my intro phrase. Genuinely the best in the best impersonist that I know personally, you know, by far. Um, so there you go. And I went to drama school. <laughs> so <laughs> But uh, yeah, so Matthew 9 and 10, tons to get through, same as pretty much every day in the Gospels, right? Um, but having said that, I, about halfway through, I started to wear a bit thinner because, like you said, we're trying not to say the same stories and the same points. Yeah. And obviously, the, the Gospels do have a lot of similarities, like different people's perspectives and takes, but on the same stories and the same things Jesus said. Anyway, so I'm going to start today with Matthew 9, verse 8. When the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe and they praised God who had given such authority to man. And it's just interesting because they don't seem to understand that Jesus, who is right there in front of them, is God, is Messiah. Right. So they praised God for what had been given to man, thinking that Jesus was just a man in that sense. Now, I might have, I might be reading too much into it. It might be like, but my view of that is they're like, oh, look at this man. Look at the fact that he is able to be given stuff from God and as if they weren't the same yeah. person. Because I guess they would have probably seen him as a prophet at that stage. Exactly. Um, but that's a really point. Say. I hadn't seen that, bro. I like that. Yeah, yeah. And I think it gets to a certain stage where I, I've learned this from you and um, – I really like it it's like actually looking at the nuances of the language sometimes yeah and you can learn a lot just from that so anyway there's my first point I love it, bro. um so i am just the next very next verse the calling of matthew as jesus went on from there he saw a man named matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth follow me he told him and matthew got up and followed him and it was just this whole obedience without question that i love and wanted to focus on because so often right now we're at the stage with our kids where we ask them to do something and i'm pretty sure i've mentioned this before but instead of doing what we ask them to they ask a bunch of questions or they give us an answer and so i've started saying listen i want action not answers because it's i'm not asking you something for your opinion on it or i'm not telling you to do something because of your opinion if i'm asking feel free to give me an answer but if i'm telling you to do something just do it yeah yeah later not answers and yeah. I think that is the kind of faith and obedience that jesus is asking for yeah that's that's good man and that reminds me of something that um my pastor was talking about last night at the men's retreat is uh it was in the book of um it was first oh my goodness is it first solomon i want to say no first samuel what am i on about yeah first solomon is not not a thing and it's Saul and uh God tells Saul to just demolish and get rid of the Amalekites, right? And to utterly destroy them and to not leave any man, woman, child, or even a calf, cow, sheep alive, right? And he destroys them, but he keeps the best stuff for himself. And then he's called out on it. And again, what my pastor was talking about is it's about the obedience. It's not about questioning and be like, yeah, well, God said that, but isn't it great that I've saved all these spotless lambs for sacrifice? Like, no. Just do the action. Don't try and come up with your own stuff. Obedience over sacrifice, baby. Obedience over sacrifice, absolutely. Um, I also had um, Matthew 9, 9, pretty much the same point as you. Matthew chose what the re- I think one of the reasons Matthew or Levi, as he was known to his friends sometimes, was chosen because partly because of his decisiveness. And he just doesn't flinch to follow Jesus, even though he's giving up and financially great position in the society right yeah. like tax collectors was hated but they had a ton of money and wealth from it oh, yeah. so always be rolling in it 
they'd be rolling in it exactly just uh, focusing on matthew matthew 23 i don't know whether this is because the way matthew is portrayed in the chosen but effectively jesus this is when he heals the girl who was dead and jesus says she's not dead but asleep this is matthew 9 23 and they laughed at him and the way the chosen portrays matthew is is kind of a little bit bullied because of a potential sort of autism type yeah. spectrum something which is obviously that is probably elaborated yeah. but it's like i wonder if that sort of matthew was focusing on how they were laughing at jesus rather than what jesus was doing because that's his own sort of take on it and it just was a tiny little thing in there really yeah well, that, that's exactly right. The the Gospels were written by men and there are little bits of perspective from them, right? So all that adds, I think, to their authenticity. Keep going, mate. 9.28. Sweet. Yeah, we need to speed up a little bit. Um, so uh, Jesus heals the blind and mute. When he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him and he asked, do you believe I'm able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. And what I took out of that was it's the whole faith before miracles thing. Some people are desperate along the lines of, I'll believe when I see something. And that's not belief. Belief is faith in things unseen. And even then, people saw the miracles that Jesus did and still didn't believe. So actually, it's easy to say that, but not necessarily doable. And yeah. we should be having faith before we see the miracles. Yeah, did I don't know if I said that's good to the first bit. If I did, then that's better. If I didn't say it was good, then that's good. Either way, that's good. Cool. Good and stuff, just because it feeds in so quickly, Matthew 9, okay. 24, the, mir uh, the Pharisees are then basically saying, oh, it's because it's the prince of demons that he drives out demons. And mm -hmm. so often if we can't explain it, we try and justify it by what we do know. And I yeah. think that's so true for what a lot of people think about Christianity. It doesn't make sense to me. So it must be this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Um, I don't have a good segue into my point from that, but really good point. Um, Jesus sent out the 12 and said, do not go among the Gentiles or into any town of the Samaritans. So a couple couple small things. One is um, when I think of Jesus, I often don't remember. I mean, I've rediscovered and remembering it now. Jesus really came much more to, to spread the gospel to the Jews while he was here and um, don't get me wrong, like some Gentiles, like the Centurion, and there was a woman that came and asked for her daughter to be healed, right? Yeah. But it was later that he was going to put in place stuff to reach the Gentiles, and that comes to fruition in Acts. So that's a cool little nugget, I think, of like, look, save the save the the chosen right now, and they're the ones that they're the hornet's nest. We're going to have to stir up to get this whole crucifixion thing going as well. Um, and then another small one, Matthew 10, verse 20. It will not be you speaking. The spirit of your father will be speaking through you. Yeah. That again links to acts. It links to the spiritual gifts that Holy Spirit gives us at that time. But it also links, I think, pretty well to how I feel sometimes during this podcast. I'll watch it back sometimes and be like, where did that come from? Where, how did I say that? Or, you know, where what what was going on there? And um, that men's retreat I was at, again, I... I one other quick story with it. I was prayed over last night and the guy praying over me, like the way that he spoke just seemed like otherworldly, basically. Like he's a very clever, articulate guy, but like he almost went into a different mode. And it's just so cool when you see those kind of fruits and those kind of things as a Christian. Yeah. And you'll probably, the more you get used to sort of praying for people and over people, you'll probably suddenly experience that yourself and like, whoa this isn't me like praying here this is god saying stuff and it, it's yeah. just like this switch from like i don't say this i don't talk like this but it's just yeah the authority of god it's so cool it's, it's so cool um i love it you literally answered one of my points from a second ago because i was like why didn't he want to send them to samaria he'd send them to nineveh which was the capital of um israel assyria it's capital of assyria yeah. Yeah, so like yeah. why would he not send them to samaria so i love your point there thank you um my final point was 10 27 which is this whole what i tell you in the dark speak in the daylight what's whispered in your ear proclaimed from the roofs and i just love it it's like the whole we need to still ourselves and quiet ourselves to really tune into god's voice he can speak in the loud and in the chaos but i think often we need to listen in the quiet and then speak in the chaos absolutely dude couldn't agree more I'm going to squeeze one last thing in that just is based on something we said the other day. Um, so this is Matthew 10, 32. Uh, whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my father in heaven. So uh, that's a little shout out. 
That's all we've got time for today, though. What are we reading tomorrow, Mr. Peters? Tomorrow is going to be probably 11 and 12, isn't it? Yeah, Matthew 11 and 12. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, share, subscribe. Love you. See you tomorrow. It's all right.